What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be giving you my top 5 tips on how to become a filmmaker. Now these tips are in no particular order, however I do think they're essential tips for becoming a better filmmaker, whether that be for YouTube or whether that be for commercial work. I do also believe that some of these tips could be infused with photography as well. Okay, so tip number one is learn framing. When we talk about framing, we can mean anything from composition, rule of thirds, leading lines. They're all things that you can go away and do your own research, but they are all super, super important when it comes to making videos. For example, if we look at composition, the rule of thirds, meaning these two lines and these two lines, it's fine for a YouTube video for you to be stood there and stood in the middle of the camera. However, if you were in an interview situation, you wouldn't really want somebody to be talking straight into the camera like this when you're asking them questions. So obviously moving this person over onto one of the leading lines. I'm just using the viewfinder here to see where I am. Leading lines. Leading lines are basically when you put your subject in a position where the surrounding has a lot of lines that point into that person. I don't know what the uh, scientific reason is for this, but it just naturally brings the eye to the subject a little better. Okay, tip number two is get smooth. If you wanna get footage that looks super professional, there is nothing better than getting that cinematic, smooth, slow motion footage. Now, I won't cover the slow motion side too much because that's a bit too niche and a bit too specific, but you certainly do wanna get your shot smooth. Now, I use this which is uh, just the super cheap stabilizer that I bought from Amazon. Um, I think it was about 60 pounds, but it's, I've taken this all around the world with me. I've got all of my footage on this thing here. So this is actually like a, a, a handheld two axis, but basically you have the camera on here, you would balance the camera so that it fits on top, and then obviously these weights at the bottom weight the camera down, and then the idea is that you can move around like a maniac, and you will get super smooth footage with one of these. I'm gonna be honest, I am now sort of taking the next step up, and I'm actually about to fork out quite a bit of money on a electric motorized gimbal, which I'm pretty excited to get, but if you can't afford to go out and spend sort of 700 pounds, 700 to 1,000 pounds, on a motorized gimbal that's got kind of like everything you could imagine on it, then I would say go out and spend 50 to 60 pounds on Amazon and get one of these bad boys. It will give you super smooth footage. Tip number three, learn editing. So guys, there are literally hundreds of different editing softwares out there for you. There are some free ones, there are some paid ones. Um, obviously the paid ones are gonna give you way more options than the free ones do. So I would always suggest maybe spending a little bit more money to actually purchase an editing software that is gonna enhance your videos and your photos. Uh, my own personal opinion, and as I'm giving my personal opinions in this tips video, I would suggest getting Premiere Pro for your videos and getting Photoshop for your photos. Um, also on the photo side, I would probably suggest getting Lightroom as well. It's just a sick editor. The biggest disclaimer that I can give you whilst we're talking about editing is just please keep yourself original. Man, in the last month, I must have seen close to 500 videos on YouTube and photos that are just edited as though Sam Calder edited them. Just the swooshes and the transitions and the whip cameras and the zooms, the zooms, oh my God, the zooms. Fucking hell, the zooms. Not even just the zooms, but like the color grade, that deep orange and teal, like, Sam Calder has made it, has been one of the best video editing people on the planet at the minute. He's so good. But that doesn't mean that you completely ripping it off is going to make you the best in the world as well. It just makes people look at your videos and think, man, you've just recreated Sam Calder's stuff. So when it does come to editing, make sure you stay completely original. Find your own color grades. Find your own presets. Find your own transitions. Really sort of like go out there. The internet is amazing. Go on YouTube and just watch hundreds of videos on how to edit properly. Um, and then when you learn the basics of editing, obviously start trying to bring in your own transitions as well. Okay, tip number four is audio. Audio is single-handedly the most important thing in video. I learned this the hard way. I started making vlogs probably a month ago, a month and a half ago. I didn't really know anything about audio. I just literally used the in-camera audio, which is terrible, it's awful. And you could have a, 20,000 pound red camera 
and just have audio coming from like an in-body DSLR and it's going to be terrible, it's going to look terrible. People are going to watch it and they're going to be like, this is awful because the audio is awful. However, you could plug one of these microphones that I'm using, which is a Rode VideoMic Pro, into an iPhone and your footage is immediately going to look professional just because the audio is so crisp and so good. Learn audio, man. Go away and find the best things that you can get within your budget. This Rode VideoMic Pro was, I think it was about £179. Anywhere between £179 and £200, but that one-off purchase of that is going to give you crisp, good audio in all of your videos moving forward. And that brings me on to my last tip of the day, tip number five, just do it. Just do it! Guys, I can't stress it enough that the single-handedly most important thing when you're trying to become a filmmaker is just getting out there and doing it. Watch videos by night on YouTube, learning all the things, all the techniques that you want to learn, but then go out the next day, take your camera with you and just film anything. It doesn't matter if you live in a cinematic location or whether you just live in a box under your bed. I don't even know if that's possible. You know what I'm saying? If you, It doesn't really matter whereabouts you live. Just take your camera and just get out there and just start filming stuff. I've seen a lot of videos lately from people like Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, who's my favorite YouTuber ever, and a number of other people as well who have said that story is king and it's the most important thing and it doesn't matter about the technology or the cameras that you have and I do agree with it to an extent I agree that story is king and it is the most important thing in filmmaking however I would say to that that there are certain things that some cameras can't do to get the story that's in your head out there um, that other cameras more expensive cameras and more expensive lenses can do but the fundamentals of it are completely true to give you a quick example of that I have a Nikon D5 300 with a Rode VideoMic Pro I use Premiere Pro is my editing software. So if you put that whole bundle together, you probably got about a thousand pounds worth of equipment there. However, if I was to take this out with me when I went on one of my vlogs, like whilst I'm running through the forest, you're gonna get loads of shaky footage right in front of my face because this camera can't really get that kind of footage. However, if I use this little small action camera, which is the GoPro Hero 5, I can hold this out here. It's got in-body image stabilization. It's got super wide angle and I know that I can go for a run and I can vlog into this camera. Yeah, the audio might be a little bit worse than what the audio is on here, but this is going to get the better image. So the most important thing is these GoPros and these big DSLRs and everything else you can get with it, the stabilizers, the gimbals, they're all tools to help you tell a story that's in your head. And the best advice that I can give, it literally is the most important thing is just use whatever you have. The best quote I've ever heard is the best camera on the planet is the one that's in front of you. And that sounds really cliche, but it is totally true. Just tell the best stories you can with the equipment you've got. I know it might sound crazy because in some of my vlogs, um, I have been mentioning every now and then that I'm saving for my dream camera. I do have like pretty much 2000 pounds saved to one side, ready to buy the new camera, again, I'm not gonna tell you what it is just yet because I wanna do an unveiling of it. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why am I spending thousands and thousands on a new camera? But that camera can do like the most incredible things. It can do everything that I would ever wanna do in the future too. So although this DSLR is amazing for what I need it for, this GoPro is amazing for what I need it for, and I can tell all the stories that I wanna tell right now. However, in the future moving forward, I have weddings coming up that I'm shooting for. I have other commercial work that I'm doing for other people. And I know that I'm gonna need a big beast of a camera that's gonna get me every shot that I need. It's gonna get me the slow motion that I need. So that's why I'm upgrading to that. It just means it's another piece of technology that's gonna be in my arsenal when I go to shoot videos. So guys, that is it from me for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you're not already. Check out my other videos. I do vlogs every other day. Um, I also do a lot of tutorials on Instagram growth and making films, I guess. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.